I'm Deborah Kilpatrick, and I'm the Vice President of Science for the Foundation on the Board of Directors. I'm Jan Teller, I'm Science Officer for the Foundation. Well, I used to be a faculty member, I run my own lab, I was a professor at medical school and one day I had enough and I uh, was very intrigued by the Estonia Foundation and I accepted uh, the, the first ever position of uh, science officer in uh, late 2005, so it's more than five years now of my work for the foundation and I with the hindsight, I can say it was the best choice of my life. So my story of uh, being involved with the foundation <coughs> began when I was 24 years old because I was a patient. Uh, I didn't know what I had, but it turns out I had cerebral, cervical dystonia. And I, um, since that time, have been in and out of remission several times. So I'm a very lucky patient. I'm in a, a somewhat odd case uh, in that way. But I understand the plight of patients with this disease uh, quite well. And along the way, I was asked to come on the science committee for the foundation. Uh, my PhD is in bioengineering, and um, I have a lot of expertise in cardiovascular disease, uh, and understand a lot about how uh, new therapies are developed and commercialized uh, in that disease space, and became very active in the foundation over time in the science program with Jan. It covers uh, everything from grant funding, fellowship uh, uh, funding, through contracts, organizing meetings, interacting with uh, all entities uh, which are involved in movement disorders ranging from National Institutes of Health, Department of Defense, uh, different offices uh, dealing with rare diseases and so forth. Uh, obviously a big part of it, although not uh, purely science, is interaction uh, uh, with uh, patients, dystonia patients, and not only translating uh, heavy-duty science stuff to uh, people who are affected uh, by dystonia, uh, but also engaging them in that. This ranges from uh, not only inviting patients to uh, scientific meetings, to uh, uh, congressional hearings, uh, but also uh, integrating patients into medical research. Clinical trials can only happen when patients uh, get involved. For me, the science program is um, visualized along a spectrum, and at one end of that spectrum is, is very basic research. Uh, for example, you know, research that's now possible on the heels of the Human Genome Project, looking at fundamental basis of disease, fundamental mechanisms of disease, and how that might explain not only the disease itself, but the manifestation of disease in, in patients uh, with different forms of dystonia. At the other end of the spectrum is, is really <coughs> clinical application. Uh, commercialization of, of new therapeutics, potentially even a cure, and sort of in the middle of that spectrum is translational research, uh, bench to bedside, uh, if you will, and the foundation is responsible for creating mechanisms and vehicles all along that spectrum to find support and resource allocation for all sorts of activities. Now we have not only one gene, we have several genes already discovered which really identified precisely in genetic terms uh, different uh, dystonias. So initially I guess the thought was maybe there's one dystonia with many different very uh, complex symptoms. Now we know that there are many dystonias uh, with different genetic uh, backgrounds, with different symptomatology. Uh, nevertheless we uh, are beginning to understand that all those genes might be acting through a very common uh, pathway. O obviously we have very vague idea how they really operate, uh, but this is the challenge for the next uh, at least several years and this is where we uh, are trying to concentrate our, our efforts. I see the foundation uh, pushing science in, in the sort of two trajectories in the next say five to seven year time frame. Uh, one is, is very definitely at the molecular basis of disease level and understanding um, you know, further and further what genes or what, what expression levels of certain genes are responsible for different forms of dystonia. I, I think that we've never been closer to understanding all the, all the forms of dystonia than we, have now from, than we are now from the standpoint of a molecular basis. I think the other trajectory, if you really look at deep brain stimulation and the success of neurostimulation uh, and the incredible, remarkable outcomes that these patients are seeing with that technology, you know, I, I think there's just an exciting, exciting um, 
uh, world that's been opened up in, in the stand, from the standpoint of neurostimulation. If you combine those two things together, you know, can you actually now understand from a molecular basis why neurostimulation works? I think that opens up an entirely new set of therapeutic options over time for patients in, in a longer term time horizon. And I'm very confident that the foundation will, will be there when that's ready to happen. We try to uh, do everything possible essentially every day to communicate with patients, to engage them. We have a unique and uh, phenomenal patient base uh, or DMRF membership. These people are members of our foundation, uh, receive all possible information we constantly uh, prepare and produce, informing them about uh, recent uh, events in, in science, recent uh, achievements, results. Uh, we try to engage them uh, as much as possible in the process of, of doing science so they understand things f like DBS for example, not only that this is something which can be prescribed and you can undergo this, but the, uh, uh, the basis of, of it and w limitations of it. Uh, we try to educate people about uh, available drugs available procedures with, with the understanding that we are just a foundation. We are not recommending specific uh, neurologists. We are not trying to meddle with this, but we interact essentially with everyone in, in the field, uh, ranging from patients as we, as we started talking about this and ending with government agencies, even companies which produce uh, uh, drugs or medical devices. We are not uh, shying away from this. Uh, we have to collaborate with them. And this is mutually beneficial. And I guess uh, the Estonia patients should be uh, uh, proud of, the, of themselves, that they are very engaged. It's very important to engage um, both our supporters as well as our patient community uh, in education and awareness about the breadth of the science program that the foundation is leading and, and pushing forward. Um, and I think, I, I think that you know, we do spend a lot of time trying to do that. I think the other part of it though is assurance. Um, when you're a patient and you're sick, it's, it's a very difficult thing to believe that progress is being made because it's not being made for you. <laughs> you don't feel it day to day, you're still sick. And I think with chronic diseases like this, it's incredibly important for um, the foundations, the providers, the caregivers, the families to constantly be giving patients assurance that things can change. And um, from my own perspective with regard to the success that I see in the science program at the foundation, um, it's not success for the foundation, it's success for the, for the patients and hopefully giving them assurance that things will change. As a patient, uh, it's important to me. In my case, I don't know if I'm going to come out of remission tomorrow or if I'm going to never be out of remission. You know, so for me, this, the, the knowledge, again, back to this word of assurance, the assurance that the foundation is on this <laughs> uh, and that science is moving forward and that new therapies and, and possibly even cures are in the future. Uh, as a patient, it's a very high interest to me and I feel like um, you know, I can have a role in maybe helping that happen for, for other patients and myself. Hang in there, we're coming. The science will be there, I guarantee it, and the foundation will make sure of it. We are working tirelessly to uh, achieve our goals, and our goals are stated very clearly. We are uh, working towards the cure. In the meantime, we are working towards uh, effective treatments to uh, improve dystonia patients' lives. Uh, we want to understand dystonia, cure it, get rid of it. This is our mission.